I'd like to present you with a star. She is a world-renowned da ballet dancer and choreographer. She and her productions have toured worldwide. She's been featured in the New York Times, on CNN, on several international media, and also recently in our own NRC Handelsblad. Dada Massilio fuses classical ballet, which she was trained in, with African dance. Dada has created and performed 11 original choreographies, which, which she laces with real-life contemporary issues. She has done a new version of Romeo and Juliet, but also a swan lake featuring homophobia and AIDS. Most recently, she has done a feminist retelling of Giselle, and, as she says herself, a violent and rough version. As part of the Next Generation program for partnerships with organizations that work with young people, every year the fund hands out the Prince Klaus Next Generation Award. This is a prize for a young person or organization that has done exemplary cultural work related to youth, gender, diversity, and inclusion. The jury has honored Dada Massilio for, among other reasons, for inspiring young generations and confidently projecting the possibilities open to South African women. Ladies and gentlemen, Dada Massilio. Good evening. Um, it's very ironic that I'm sitting here with a microphone on because um, when I was a little girl, I was always obsessed with microphones. I would use everything as a microphone, um, uh, deodorant, uh, cans, anything that I could find. Um, so it's not really very surprising that um, I ended up on the stage. I'm incredibly passionate about what I do. Um, I started formal dance training when I was 12 at a place called the Dance Factory um, in Johannesburg. I'm trained in uh, contemporary dance. I'm not a ballet dancer. I'm trained in contemporary dance um, and classical ballet. Um, I also had the privilege to go to um, the National School of the Arts, uh, where I was able to do my academic subjects um, and then still dance. Um, I choreograph by default. I actually really don't like choreography because I think that it's incredibly difficult. Um, but I had to do it because I'm also incredibly ambitious. I, I also trained at um, the Performing Arts Research and Training Studios in Brussels for two years, which is actually where I started choreographing because they forced us. Um, <laughs> yeah, they forced us to choreograph. Um, and then after that, I went back um, to, to South Africa, but there were not really any choreographers that were doing these works that I wanted to, to make. Um, I think my first um, inspiration with the classics started with Macbeth, because when I went to high school, um, we had to do Macbeth, and uh, Macbeth is incredibly difficult, and I hated it. Um, but then when I went to Brussels, uh, I had to do it again. We had to do the play, so we uh, had to memorize it. It was actually Romeo and Juliet. Um, so in 2008, I, I received the Young Artist um, Award for Dance, um, and I was commissioned to make a work. So I started off with uh, Romeo and Juliet, and then after that I did a Carmen, after that, Swan Lake. Um, after that, I did a solo uh, based on Hamlet's Ophelia called The Bitter End of Rosemary, which is about madness. Um, and yeah, um, uh, then the, this one that we've been touring now is Giselle. Um, I really like to push boundaries. Um, I think that it's really important to talk about um, issues, you know, so I like to make um, works that are issue based. I want to talk about. Um, uh, homophobia, I want to talk about AIDS, I want to talk about domestic violence, rape, um, and I really think that it's very important to really zoom in on um, these issues because I find that a lot of the time in society we tend to sweep things under the carpet because you're going, it's not my thing, it's not affecting me, I don't want to know, but it actually is affecting all of us, and I think that um, it's high time that we really came together um, and tackled these, these issues. It's not very easy. Um, in terms of uh, homophobia for me, I think that it's, um, uh, as you were saying, that uh, you know, people are scared of what they don't know. So I'm hoping that uh, I can make work that asks questions, um, that we can start a dialogue, that um, instead of judging, that we can really um, 
educate ourselves um, and, and, and go, okay, why am I so scared of this thing um, if I don't know it? I also love working with androgyny. I think that it creates a, an interesting dynamic um, in the work. Uh, so I don't, I don't discriminate. Um, and a funny story about Swan Lake here is that the first rehearsal um, of Swan Lake, I had put uh, tutus out um, for everyone, for the women, basically, to, to put on for rehearsal. And I went into the studio and all the men had the tutus on. So, you know, I think that also um, sometimes it's not just about uh, dictating what happens. Sometimes you have to let, let things just be. Um, and I, I, I think that I'm also a choreographer that really likes to make people feel, you know, whether it's joy, whether it's sadness, whether it's pain. I think that that's, that's really important because we are living in the world of computers where everybody is on the screen, on the phone, on the computer, um, and that we've become so desensitized um, that we don't feel anything. And I think that that is really sad. So um, one of my things is I... If, if, if I feel something, I want to I wanna transmit it out there, and I want the, the audiences to, to feel, feel, feel it as well. Um, so, I mean, it's a great honor for me to um, also receive this award, because I feel like I've done a 360. Um, when I was 12 years old, uh, Queen Beatrix actually came to Johannesburg uh, to watch a performance, and I remember um, I was tasked with giving her the flowers, and I didn't... Uh, uh, I'd never done a curtsy before, so the curtsy came out like this. So I think that, you know, then from there, it's like, okay, fine, I get to redeem myself, but it really does feel like a 360, and um, it's an incredible opportunity. Um, so for my next uh, project, I want to do the Rite of Spring. Um, I'm a choreographer also who likes to fuse different dance techniques, so I'm constantly learning different dance techniques, so I'm done ballet, African dance, uh, flamenco. I, I think that as, a, as, a, as an artist, it's really just your responsibility to keep pushing yourself and challenging yourself and, and seeing how much you can learn, you know, because it's not just about um, just your box that you were put in. It's, it's high time that we break down those barriers um, and not have uh, boxes. And really, um, yeah, as I said, to educate yourself and... Um, yeah, to give out to the world. So, thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I am um, personally overwhelmed by what you have achieved at this age, and um, it's 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 it's. Surely a great honor that you win the young, yeah. <laughs> the, the young generation award. Uh, but it seems that you have done things worth more than many, many lifetimes for other people. Um, you're clearly very passionate yes. about what you do. Mm -hmm. You are clearly very passionate about the world. Um, and also, you must be a role model for many people. How does that feel? It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a lot of pressure, but I mean, I, I think that it's, it's really, at the end of the day, it becomes about the work and the message that you're trying to get across. You know, it's not about, I don't want to, I don't really want to be a role model. I don't want people to emulate me. Um, but I, I think that, as I said, um, hopefully if they can learn from, from, from what I'm saying um, and that we can start a dialogue, I mean, that is more important to me than being a role model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's about each and every person taking the responsibility um, and, and, yeah, trying to make the world a better place. Now, you have done a lot of, let's say, let's call them updated versions of really modern classics. And I can imagine that not, not everybody uh, was in full agreement mm -hmm. of, of uh, you making these radical versions. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with resistance or um, pr pressure from others who are trying to limit your creativity? You know, I think that also uh, doing these classics, I mean, the, f the, the first one, well, with Swan Lake, I really thought like I was stealing a cookie from the cookie jar. <laughs> um, and I thought Why? that, it, I thought, well, yeah. because, you know, it's very famous. And then here's this young girl going, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
redo it and, and, and do something different. So I did think that it was going to fall flat on its face. But you've got to try. You know, you've got to take risks. And um, if it had fallen flat on its face, that was also fine, you know. Um, but I think that it's about trying and not, again, having these boxes that you can't touch this or you can't touch that. And um, with the resistance, I think that people are allowed to, to feel what they want to feel. You know, I mean, not everybody is going to like what I do. Um, and I think that if everybody did like what I did, then there would be a problem as well. You know, so I think that it's, 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 it's good for people to have their, their opinions. And, but I think that as long as I stay true to, to what it is that I'm trying to do and um, get that message out across, I think that's the most important thing. If you, I'm, yeah. It's the fact that you know, I need to be honest with what I'm saying, yeah. because then that comes across. Your, your confidence makes it seem as if the road was so easy. I am so nervous right now. <laughs> no, come on! <laughs> <laughs> How can you be nervous? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's all have a 10 second break so that no one is nervous. Okay, but I mean, to me, your confidence makes it seem as if it was really easy, but I, surely it was not. No, it's not. It's not easy at all. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, and I am very ambitious, but uh, I do cry quite a bit now. I've learned how to cry when things get really mm -hmm. tough. Um, but I think that it's it's also about being human and about going, you trying out something and I want to put out my best work, um, you know, because I, I respect and I love it and I'm passionate about it. Um, but it's definitely, it's, it's, it's not easy, but mm -hmm. it's worth it. Yeah. And I will always do it. As you, as, you, as you were saying, you care about, the. I mean, everybody cares about the world, of course. Yeah. Like there's only maybe Donald Duck would say, I don't care about the world. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, not Donald Duck. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, do, how do you feel that dance can actually contribute to a better world? Well, I think that, you know, we express ourselves with our bodies. And I think that... Um, as I said, I love storytelling, and uh, uh, story storytelling through dance has been a very, very challenging journey for me because I've had to find all these different characters that I portray in different parts of my body, you know? So that in itself is a challenge, but I think that through movement, yes, you can, and through expression, you really can, um, s people can see that you're passionate or you're honest or you're vulnerable or you're grieving, you know? So I think that um, what I always say is that it's about the honesty of, of, of how you perform. And I think that through that, because the body doesn't lie, mm. um, through that, then people can see, you know, from whence it's coming from, mm. yeah. You've also become such a global citizen. I mean, you are from South Africa. But I'm but exhausted. <laughs> yeah, you must be. I mean, you're, you're all over the world. I hear yeah. in, in March you will be actually yes. performing in the Netherlands. Yes, we are going to be doing um, Giselle here in Amsterdam in March. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the dates are yet, but yeah. We'll find out later okay. and let everybody yeah. know. Uh, but, but when you become a global citizen, do you feel you also, that's also a sort of an exchange? You have to give up some of your roots in order to be global and able to go around the world? No, I don't think that I will ever lose my roots because, I mean, I'm from, I'm from South Africa. My roots are always going to be there. But to be able to, to share that with the rest of the world is, is great. But my roots are not going anywhere. Okay, well, that is clear. Okay, Dada thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.